Hi, and welcome to the next in this series of screencasts on programming for psychology and vision science. So in this screencast, we're going to look at how we can control the flow of our programs by testing conditional statements. We're going to do this by using the if family of statements in Python. All right, so the first step is, as usual, to start up Spider. And we're going to create our, our blank file and, and save it, as usual. Okay, so I've got spider loaded here. Let's save this. Okay, so the way we're going to approach conditionals is in the context of a component of an experiment. So say you're running an experiment with three conditions and the order of conditions is going to be shuffled across trials. So let's say you're representing the conditions by a number. So either one, or two, or three. So we're going to consider a situation in which you have the condition number for a trial, but you need to do different things depending on the condition. So you might show different types of stimuli for condition one than you do for condition two. So this is where conditional statements come in. So let's start by pretending that the condition number for this particular trial is 2. So we'll define a variable called cond number and give it the value 2. Okay, so we're not actually going to do anything relating to our real experiment here. So let's just say that for demonstration purposes, we want our program to print out the phrase blank if the condition number is 1 the letter capital A if the condition number is 2, and the letter capital B if the condition number is 3. So one way to do this is to use conditionals. So we start by using the if statement. So we type if, then we type cond number equals 1, colon, enter, you can see it's indented. So now um, on line 5 here we're, we've gone in a few spaces and we're going to type print blank. Okay. okay, so let's pick this apart. So firstly we've used the command if, which is a special Python command. We followed it by a test of equality so we talked about these earlier. This is something that returns a boolean, so either true or false. Then we have a colon character. So you can read this as being if the condition number is equal to 1, do something. So to specify that something, we then have a new line. We have it indented, so it can either happen automatically like the program did here, or we can use the tab key to indent our line. Then we have our, our familiar print statement. So this indentation is quite important. It means that whatever is indented gets attached to the if statement. So whatever is attached in this way will get executed if the test evaluates to true. So let's save it and run it and see what happens. Okay, so our program's finished and, and nothing's happened. So let's through, work through why that, why that happened. So we have our variable cond number, which is defined as having a value of 2. We then test if the cond number is equal to 1. It, it isn't, so then we move on, and that's the end of the program. So now what we need to do is to add some more conditionals. We can follow up on the first by using the elif command. So we could add I'm pressing enter, you can see it's automatically indented. So we don't want to be attached to this if statement anymore. So I'll press backspace to get me back to the start. I'll type elif cond number equals 2, colon. Now you can remember that what we wanted to do here was to print capital A. 
Okay, so this can be read as else if condition number is equal to 2, print A. All right, so let's save it and run it again. All right, so now you can see that in our output, we've got the um, character capital A, which is what we were hoping for given our value of our condition number. All right, so let's complete our program by adding the same um, sort of uh, functionality if condition number is equal to three. If remember, we wanted this to be print B. Okay, let's save it and run it again. What we would expect to see is the same as before. And yep, we do. Okay, so let's finish it up by using another component of this family of commands. This is else. So the statements under the else get executed if none of the previous tests were true. So in our case, since we know that conditions one, two, and three are all that we're expecting, this would mean that we've, we've messed up somewhere. So what we might add is, so else, we'll print unexpected condition number. Okay. So now let's go back, go back through our program logic. So we have our condition number defined here as two. We start out by testing, well, is the condition number equal to one? This is false. So now we go down to the next one. Is condition number equal to two? This is true. So then we look at whatever's attached to this, which is whatever's indented, which is this print A. So we execute that. Now we've executed something, so we're going to break out of this and go back down to the bottom. So now let's try what if our condition number is three. I'm going to save it and we'll run it. Okay, so now you can see it's printing the character B. Same sort of logic. Firstly, we test, is it equal to one? No, it's false. Is it equal to two? No, that's false. Is it equal to three? That's true. So we're going to execute what's under this elif here. So let's say that we, we made a mistake and instead of having three where we went to, we actually had 30. So let's see what happens now. We run it. Okay, so now you can see that the program's telling us, well, there's an unexpected condition number. Same sort of idea. It was false for equals one, false for equals two, false for equals three. This else captures that anything else that hasn't, if we haven't had any trues previously, it's going to execute this um, statement here. Okay, so returning to our objectives. So it's just a, a straightforward one for this screencast. So know how to use the if statement to control the path of execution. So we've seen how we can use this if, elif, and else construct to be able to execute different code that's conditional on a particular test. All right, so I'll see you again in the next screencast.